Hi, Mark Savage here, part four. It wasn't going to be the part four, it was going to be the engine. But I wanted to focus on the front end. Now the front end of the bike, obviously this is the headstock, the bearing here, and then here's a bearing here, and you have the front wheel, which obviously is a bearing for the brake system, okay? So not brake system as such, but the actual unit, so the disc, the bearing's in there, it's one solid unit. Now, how do you test the front end of your bike? Not on the stand, you've got to take it off the stand. Hold the front brake and rock it back and forth. Now, if you can hear or see that, this bike is moving when it shouldn't be. This is the headstock, okay? Some people call it different names. I understand that in America, we call this a disc, in America we call it rotors. There you go. So if it's got a different name or not, I don't know. But let's show you in here. But first I want to show you this wheel as well. Can you see that? I'll zoom in on that in a second for you. This is moving when it shouldn't be moving. Okay? Have a look at the headstock and have a look at this. I'm going to show you how to tighten them up or if it's knackered, replace it. So we're looking in there today. Let me get a screwdriver and point it. This are the three nuts. These two are connected together, that's separate. You push that one back, and then push them ones around. You need a hammer, and just tap them around. If you can't get a good enough bite on them, undo this bolt here, take this up, and you'll get easy access. Uh, all the wires in the way. Now, there's a bearing through here. If I show you this, can you see that moving? That is not right. Really not right at all. Sometimes people think these aren't done up, but I assure you they are. This needs to come off, and in here is a bolt. We're gonna look at it in a minute. But as I said, this whole unit here, the bearings are in there, they're, they're not, if, if I can't tighten it up, it needs to be replaced, simple as that. That will fail an MOT. And it will feel very, well, not very nice riding along. This and that, wiggly woggling everywhere, is not good. Now, on my other couple of videos, there's been some sound problems. The GoPro 5, excellent viewing, but videoing, but the sound, the stereo or wind, I've got it on wind today, it's a little bit windy, let's hope you can hear me. On the stereo, Anything behind me, the wife talking in the house, the dog which is on the floor chewing the bone, really bad here, hurt it, didn't you? So, anyway, that stand needs spraying, it's pissing me off. But there you go, we can see that moving. So, stay with me, and we are going to, let me, that would have been wiggly woggling back every time he braked, went around the corner, this would have been wiggling like that. It would have been quite, quite a horrible ride, if I'm honest with you. So, let's get on with it. These would be uh, 17 mil. <sighs> They're tight, I said this. Hold front brake, leave them off. You might as well use the bike brake rather than spin the wheel. Let me get this off. Let's do this one first. Had this before where you can sometimes tighten them up if they're loose. I mean this has been on um, 11 years so they can get a little bit of wear and they become loose. I haven't got to worry about too much of the bike because remember it's most of the stuff is off anyway so we can just drop that but let's have a look. Can you see that? That's not good. Bloody keys keep that in. So, let's see if we can tighten this up at all. Oh, look at that. You see that? That's, that's quite loose, actually. Give it some. You can't overdo this. Seems like it's a lot there. I'll make sure it still spins. Yes, it does. It spins lovely. That's actually taking, well, a lot of the movement out of that. 
So that is all it needed. Otherwise, this would have been have to be replaced. So the brake caliper would have come off and this replaced. You can get these second hand, a lot of money. That's good news. I thought I'd get any more out of that. Only a tiny bit. Don't overdo it. It's not worth it. Lastly, what is that where it's jammed? And then simply put them all back on. I think what happened is the last owner may have thought that these were loose and so really over tightened them. But that's all you had to do. There's a little bit of movement. I'd say that's intolerance, a lot better than it was before. You can also check the wear on the tyre. Now these front ends here often bumped up curbs and so on. And what they do is they twist this way. Or they can go back or they can twist the other way. And what you end up doing is riding along like this. And what you'll notice is the wear on the tyre is really uneven. This is a good wear on the tyre and I knew it was okay. The bike should be up this way and not this way, it's the stand, so don't, don't be put off by it. I mean, put a little bit under there, it'd probably be much better. But you're after getting the steering dead straight, and as I said, the fairing comes down and the line goes there. And the tyre needs to be perfect in line. There are some little bit of tolerances you're allowed, but generally, well, that's much better anyway. Right, this now, let's get this. It's not going to hurt from a little bit. Good old grease in there. Now, sometimes it hasn't been touched in a bloody long time, and this is really loose. I'll show you there that I can just move that back. And maybe I shouldn't have sprayed it full of grease before I showed you, but you know that that's really, really loose in there. So, as I said, there's three nuts that hold this on. Down here, there's a bearing, and up here's a bearing. So I often say here's some I made earlier. These are the little ball bearings, okay. They're sometimes open or sometimes a sealed ring. It's a little top one. <laughs> that's an auto choke top. Oh, well, that's there. You know they're like gold dust, these little <laughs> these little things like gold dust. Anyway, claw just about the sound again. In there. I've now got it on wind, so hopefully you're gonna hear me better. But two of these are together. And what you'll find is it looks something like that. Okay, and these two will go around together, and this one's a lock one that goes on top. So you undo the lock one, and then tap them round, and then tap that top one round afterwards to lock it down. This gets loose, and what they do is all do the same. So you have to undo that one. It's a bit difficult for a prop, isn't it? and then tap them around that way. So that's what I'm going to do in here now. Top one back. As I said, you can take off the top. I often don't. And you have to get a big old screwdriver, and as you get round, you'll get the other one round there as well. That's nicely going round. Don't put the rubber ring in there. Now you don't want it so tight that you can't the steering anymore. And that's this one now. And that will fail the MOT if it locks. Okay, so give it a little loosen up. But that is acceptable. That's a lot better than it was. It's not rattling. The bike would be a lot, lot better as well. I'm going to get a little bit of wood, put that up front so I can pick the front up. Now that, too much. Could leave it and it will free up a little bit. But 
I'm just going to pop that back a tad. That's it, that will fail the MOT. Much better. Right. Should fall back. That's better, I'm happy with that. Now I'll put the top one back round without moving all of them. And there we go. That's not going to move now. This bike now should ride a lot, lot better. There we have wind. Thank you. Nice straight wheel. Once I get the mud guard, and that goes on here, that's easier to line nicely up. Nice firm wheel now, there's a little bit of movement. I said that wouldn't fail the MOT. Might even be an advisory on a real hard garage, but that's a lot better than what it was before. Headstock, a lot better. That sweet spot, I could probably give it a little bit more off, but do you know what, I'm actually happy with that. There might be some wear on there, that will free up nicely. I'm gonna put a load of grease down there as well. And that will free up. I'm actually happy with that. The reason why you can't have it locked is because you imagine locked and it locked, you know. But most certainly a lot, lot better than it was. As I said, this will ride a lot better. Well worth looking at this front end. Really is. So very few tools. A couple of sockets, a hammer. I love this. Oh, I've had this years. Copper one side, cloth the other, or firm compound. Don't use claw hammers and stuff like that. Well, you can, because it makes a bigger bang. I find these are brilliant hammers and a big chunky screwdriver, and they'll get them round nicely. Check out the next part, which will be the engine, which I had a lot of questions about already, actually. Um, variator, carburetor, Static coil, we're going to look at all them bits and bobs. I'm not going to take the static coil off, it's water cooled, easy to get off, but I'm not going to be doing it because I know I've got good charge. And electrics now are. That battery I bought was dead, went to 11.28 volts, I put it on there, nothing. Like I said before, you can have volts but no amps at the battery, so it wouldn't even light a light bulb. Brand new Yoshi battery, this is going to be really good, um, put the acid in it. Um, wear glasses, gloves, don't get in your eyes. Fill it just under the top level line. Make sure that the bit here that's sealed is off. Obviously, it could explode, to be honest with you. Uh, but that's on charge, and that should be a really good Lepisone power source. Then we'll be able to check out other little bits. Still waiting for uh, the indicator relay, the front mark guard, and that spare panel to come. Meanwhile, I have glued up this solid now, so that's not battening anymore. Um, I know it's only heat glue, but it really does do a good job. Bonded this front end here, so it's no longer moving, so it's solid underneath. Took off the uh, stickers. There was um, three little lines down here. I think they worried about it, so I just petrified them off. I've got some decals, so I'm going to put them there. And this was, well, not brilliant, so I need to take this off anyway to have a look at the bulb because I don't think the brake light was working and the micro switch on there isn't working either. I can go through the micro switch, actually, I'll just quickly show you now. These are micro switches, okay? Two little wires in there. And this just unscrews. So when you pull the brake, it's out. When you push the brake in, it's not. This is how your starter works. When you pull the brake in, that comes out and it makes the connection. These go. There's nothing with this one. They do go though. Wind them in, clean them up, bit of WD-40, and these often get pulled off. These two wires often, I don't know why, but they get water in them and stuff like that. They get corroded. And that's it. If after you've cleaned them up and it still doesn't work, you need to replace it. They are a couple of five pounds, I think. 
um, easy to get hold of and they're on all bikes to be honest with you all of them every ped has it big bikes even have the same design as that to start your bike but obviously on big bikes there should be a clutch and that'll be a break but now this should start on both sides so a very quick fill in my new one came plug it in that's better it goes a little case there i've got one of them uh let's turn it on um we're doing what we're doing I'm turning it on and can you see that hallelujah hallelujah look at that Yes, it's going to flash fast because I haven't got the front ones on. And the pod guard came with the bracket and the side bracket. That's all good. So that was a quick fill in. Right, before this video ends, I've got to show you something. Now, you know I've got a couple of videos coming up and I've chatted out there. But I'll just squeeze this one in. Because I've just picked up a Yamaha Aerox 50cc. Needs a little bit of work doing to it. I have to say, two people now I pick bikes up from. Really nice couples. All right, mum, dad, daughter. This was a mum, dad, and daughter biker family. Uh, mum rides a bike, dad rides a bike. They go out together. Daughter had this, now moved to 125. So, so nice to see genuine people out there. You know, not the sort. Yeah, mate, I was doing wheelies on it last night, and uh, uh, you get home and it's got no fucking engine. Anyway, nice people. This is gonna come up after the engine, after the reveal of that one, and then we're gonna do this one. Rear shock's gone, didn't know that. Young girl on it, I mean, the dampener's gone, so you get a springiness out of it, you know? Needs a little bit of work doing to it, not a lot, um, puncture in the rear, genuine, honest people. Now, as you know, my very gorgeous F-150 Ford 1991 V8 5 litre. Slight jack up on her, beautiful paintwork. I love the truck. With only 700 views, I know you lot didn't like it. So I've made a separate channel. So if you did want to see it, you can. It's on a separate channel with another video of it. Not the American one I did last time. And now I've got the belt to change. It's only belt. I've got all these brakes and bearings and I've got them on the, on the floor. I've got some massive discs to change. All change as well. I said I'm gonna do a couple of videos of that on a separate channel so I don't bore you lot. What you want to see is the mopeds, and that's what you're gonna get at least 12, 10, 12 videos now on these mopeds of me doing everything to them to get them back on the road, answering all your questions. Let's get back on to the headstock one. And there you go, a really, really short and simple little video on the front end. Thank you so much for watching. Engine next. You take care of yourselves on the road. It's 24 degrees today, but it's really dark and I'm sweating like a bitch. Bye-bye. <sighs>F-150 1991. I love this truck. And I did a video on my channel, not been watched much because people don't seem to like me doing the truck. So I've made my own channel up, another channel. Fucking planes. Fuck you. Fucking planes. Nice thing about fucking lockdowns, not fucking planes ever for fucking ten minutes. Ten minutes, should I say? I mean, one minute. I'm fucking living here, bro. That changed the flight path. <clears throat> okay, now. Breathe. Now, my truck. Now, my truck.